Uh, this is our 2014 annual open house, and I've always wanted to say we're live in front of a studio audience. So let's pan around here. <laughs> and that's awesome. We didn't even have an applause sign. They just, they just did that. So this is Mike Banks, and you've had this car for a year and a half, two years? About a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Um, what we're doing today is we're doing a, a video. We're not going to fix anybody's power steering or suspension oh. problems or anything, but the number one call I think I get behind electrical, which I know nothing about, so don't call me. Uh, <laughs> the number one call behind that electrical is my car has slop. You know, it wanders. It, should it do this? Should it do that? And so we're going to put three, four, five cars, starting with Mike's, uh, on the lift here and give you uh, a how-to on what to wiggle and what to check for and what the remedy is. So fire away. Let's put this up on the right. hoist. So, so you mentioned that this had maybe had a little slack coming down here and you felt it wasn't tight. What, what was it feeling like? Just a little bit of play in the wheel. So you're, you're constantly, you're, you're driving it, you're working it, and you're yeah. not, you, I, in I my opinion. Pick a side and kind of hang there until, yeah. you know, until you need to yeah. switch. A lot of people say, well, it's an old car, you got to expect the technology wasn't the greatest, and that's completely wrong. These cars were designed to run at 75 miles an hour all day long, and you should be able to do that on bias ply tires with one hand. That's, that's my opinion. I've driven some cars that are extremely tight, and that's been my experience, so. Let's start wiggling and see what we see here. The first thing I always do, I want you to look for uh, anywhere where you see it moving where it shouldn't. So I'm gonna do it first. What do you see? Look at joints. Here, I'm gonna do it this way. Yeah, okay, I, I feel something right here. Hear that clunk, 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 clunk? Is that looking like, uh, here now I'm gonna have you do it and I'm gonna look. So first go back and forth. And I'm going to feel right here in this joint. Okay, I'm feeling clunk right here, just a little bit. Okay, stop. Now your idle arm, that's the number one place I always look. The idle arm seems rock solid. That's an aftermarket. It's been replaced. It's greased. Okay, do it again. Is that side? Yep. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit, I'm feeling it in the bearings, which can just yeah. mean uh, repack, repack and tighten them down, but most likely means new bearings. Yeah. You know, how many miles do you think this car has? Uh, about 50,000 is what I was told. <laughs> yeah. Were they yeah. easy little old lady miles or were they drag pack, drag -pack uh, four miles. speed eliminator miles? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right on. Let's go over and do it on this one. Go ahead and wiggle this tire for me. Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit of clunk, clunk in this uh, this outer tie rod end. Okay. Now, now here's something else I want to pay attention to. Let's watch this joint, Andrew. Why he shakes it? What's going on there? See that? Now, here, here's the problem with these control valves. You'll take it to Firestone, Goodyear, wherever the local shop, and they'll put it on the rack, and they'll say, "Oh, look, sir, look at all this slack here." When I wo wobble it back and forth. Well, that's a misnomer. The, these uh, power steering systems were meant to be charged, I mean, pressure right there. So you can't do that little test until it's running. So we'll have to put it on the ground and start the car to actually test that one. But a lot of people spend a lot of money on a part they don't need. Now, grant a lot of them do need that part, but let's not waste money where... Now, this is going to be hard to test because you got headers and a big block. So for me to reach in there, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the uh, power steering box next. Ow, hot, burn. Let's see if I can. Oh, and the four-speed stuff doesn't help. And a locking column. Yeah, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm gonna do here in a second, I'll explain it to you is I always like to get both hands on the steering box, one on the pitman arm and run on the rag joint, and I rock that, 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 that rag joint back and forth ever so slightly, just a little bit. And for every tiny movement you give there, you should feel a little bit here. And a lot of people think, ah, a little bit, eh, no movement, no big deal. You'd be surprised the smallest amount at that spot translates to this on the road. A lot of people don't know that you can adjust these, and we'll talk about that later. Overall, I'm seeing this is pretty tight. So 
Okay, uh, this is Connor, and this is your 68. How long have you had it? Had it for about two years now, this month. Uh, and you drove it from Seattle? Yep. How was it down I-5 in the ruts? Um, a little uh, sloppy, a bit. Okay, well, let's start wiggling stuff. Get on the other side of this tire, and we'll see what happens. It's good there. Wiggle it really hard. Grab it side to side. Okay, I can see what's going on here. Look at this. Andrew, look at this. Right there. That's giving him a t you, you can stop wiggling there. That's giving you a ton of slop right there. These are only good for about 40, 50,000 miles uh, by the US made, not the import. And you get a little more life out of it. You shouldn't have to have an alignment after you change that. But if you feel any pulling and isn't tracking down, get alignment because you'll chew up your tires. Let's look at the rest of this. These bushings look cracked. Why don't you uh, grab right here? Right here? Yeah, and, and give it some forceful pulls back and forth. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm seeing some cracked, worn bushings here. If you do replace these, you gotta get an alignment. Um, go ahead and wiggle that tire again. I wanna feel this joint. Those two, those two joints feel good which I'm gonna assume, even though this one's split open, I'm gonna assume these are gonna be good too. Go ahead and do it again. Okay, I'm feeling a, feeling a little slop in here. And then, uh, you didn't have it on film, uh, Andrew, but uh, uh, I saw a little, little excessive slop here. I'm seeing some weepage here too. I think this control valve needs to be rebuilt because when we had it on the ground and he had the car running, uh, I saw this going back and forth a little too much. So there's something that needs to be rebuilt. And lastly, yeah, you got a ton of slop here. Yeah, look at that here. You can get the camera in here. I'm moving, I'm moving this that much and the, the pitman arm is going nowhere. So you got, you got three areas, if not four, that need attention. So you're gonna need to adjust or rebuild, rebuild replace on the uh, idler arm, replace on there. And you know, these, these uh, are original lower control arms. And uh, you know, as you're, as you're in there, you know, you might inspect them, see if maybe they don't need to be rebuilt. They actually look okay. You can't see inside and see the bushings here, but we start peeling things apart and getting in there, I, you might consider, you know, looking at the whole front end. Okay. okay, okay, does that mean okay go or okay the, pretty soon we're gonna get going? Action. Oh, action! That's oh, here, the word. Hang on, we gotta suck in our guts. <laughs> oh, here it is. Um, oh, screw that. This is Scott! My... Hey. What's wrong with your car? Oh, it's an old piece of junk. I have a, I have a, I have a special <laughs> attachment for this car because back when I was a kid, I used to drive by Tom Peterson's furniture warehouse on 82nd in Portland in this white. XR, at the time, white, yeah. XR7G, color white. was just an old dirty beater sitting out there in the parking lot, yeah. and a guy named Chris Brost used to drive it to work every day, so him and I were into Cougars at the same time as kids, so and my the, whole driving career I've been associated with this car. And by the way, the second owner got in touch with me there and sent a bunch of did he find original the original owner's pitch, manual? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Cool. It's not in the car because I don't want anyway, to Anyway, back to power steering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it doing on the road? Just a little slack? Or? Yeah, it's a little, you know, in some of the interstates, you know, they have them lovely grooves that are body. So you're fighting it. You're fighting it yeah. down the road. And, you know, you know, especially because right now I'm running with the Raider wheels and the bias ply tires, it's a little bit more of a So fight. you're a glutton for punishment. Did you not get the recall letter? Um, actually, I have a copy of it. Ford just sent it to me. You ought to go to the dealership. I should, yes. <laughs> I don't think I will. I have another set of wheels. <laughs> All right, let's put it in the air and see what All happens. Right. All right. <laughs> the audience is amazed. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> And this is a small block car without headers, so Andrew, this oh, is going to be a good there. one for to show how I'm going to test the uh, oh. steering box. Oh, you got a rip boot here. That's 
that's a huge ten dollar part so I'm gonna grab up here uh, when Scott gets out of my way <laughs> I'm gonna grab up here with my left hand on the rag joint burn my elbow on this pipe Ooh, I feel I feel something in the column you got a tilt column in this? Yeah, tilt away. Okay, I'm just rocking the rag joint back and I can feel a click, 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 click. You got some, you got some looseness prior to even getting down to this area. No. You got something going on in that tilt column. Uh -oh. Yeah, I can, I can just, but just by wiggling, I can hear a click, 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 click. Hear that? Yeah. Now let's see. Ow, that's hot. Yeah, you, you got something going on there. Okay, now I'm gonna grab here. Oh, look at this, buddy. Look at this. I'm wobbling this rag joint back and forth and nothing is happening on this Pittman arm. You got nothing. So you're going down the road, you're doing this. Yeah, a little bit. And you're having to overcorrect. Yeah. Your steering box might not be ruined or I mean need rebuilt, but at minimum it needs substantial adjustment. Yeah, so you got, you got two problems right here before you even get to anything over here. To adjust a steering box, and granted, uh, only slightly worn boxes can be adjusted. Most of them just need to be rebuilt. But when Scott gets home, he's gonna try to uh, adjust his box, and here's how he's gonna do it. He's going to reach in there, probably not a wrench that big, but he's gonna get in there and he's gonna break this nut. I pre-broke the nut, because they can be kind, kind of stiff and uh, he's going to uh, look how this is indexed and he's going to turn it one quarter turn tighter and then he's going to leave his screwdriver there and then lock it in place and really reef it down and he's going to drive it around the block or he's going to you know see how it feels and if that and it probably won't because there's quite a bit of slop in yours uh -huh. but if that doesn't uh, uh, do it he's going to do the procedure one more time Oh, wrong end of the wrench, I think. It's one end of the other. Wrench. Yeah. So he's going to go one quarter of a turn further on the box. And then he can feel on the rag joint. And, and by the way, when he's doing this in the driveway, the tires are straight ahead. So now he's going to feel, and this one I knew had slop in it. And maybe he's going to say, that's good enough. And this one, this used box, that actually did it. I don't feel any slop here. I'm moving back and forth. I got this firmly planted here. Look at that. So on this particular old box that somebody turned into a, in for a core on a rebuilt, they actually could have got by for a number of years without buying a, a rebuild from us if they had known that. Some people just want to do everything at once and then they know they're good for another 40 years and hundred and some thousand miles. But anyway, don't go more than a half turn, quarter and then a half. Because what, 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 what we got inside there is worn gears. This is what your slop looks like as you're going down the road. And by adjusting it, you're taking these worn gears and you're pushing them closer together. You're not really fixing anything, it's just a remedy. But taking worn gears and mashing them in, in, into each other, it's gonna feel terrible going down the road and you're gonna ruin your core. And if that doesn't work, you just call us up and we have a rebuild on an exchange basis. So when I grabbed that rag, rag joint and I was going like this, I, yeah. I could feel something going click click in here. So this is, this is taken out of a, a 68 tilt. Look what's going on there in that U-joint. Yeah. Remember, remember I could hear mm -hmm. that click click sound? I'm not saying yours is bad, but that right there, you're, 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 you're swerving all over the road if you got that much play. And this isn't for the average guy to, uh, to uh, service. So there, there's one area. The other area, uh, starting in 68, you had what was called a collapsible column. Right. You got in a wreck and this was designed to collapse as opposed to skewer you like the 67. Uh -huh. Jump in here, Don. What are you showing us? <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> well, yeah, I think you've probably done it already. This, this one, uh, you can see there are claws, there'll be two looks like pins and they're just plastic and they, what they did is like on this one here you have a plastic piece there two of them and there's pins there and you can see it come out the other side on here and that would collapse when most people put these in or try to put them in they put them in wrong and they'll hammer it on it a little bit and they'll break these mm -hmm. and Try and put them back in, 
and try and tighten them up a little bit because you get the slop here. Yeah, here yeah, it. yeah. And now I'll transfer to your wheel and now I'll actually put maybe one, two inches on your wheel where you'll feel the vibration. Yeah, here's something else. Sometimes people get into these columns and they mix and match them. They got a 68 column and a 69 column, both of them issues. They say, oh, they're close enough and they put them together. Well, here's what they don't realize. These are indexed to go a certain way and they'll get them 180 off, which means this little D-shaped thing is indexed wrong, which means the tiny little notch, uh, all of a sudden we'll see that that's indexed wrong. And your average mechanic at a shop is used to modern cars. Modern cars are never gonna have this problem. So they can replace everything in your front suspension and still go, I don't know, and here we go. You know, it's the simplest of things. So something to look at. So I, I think you got uh, two, maybe three problems going on there that is causing yours to wander. You drove all the way from where in Canada? Victoria, BC. Oh my goodness. And you got your wife to drive in this car with no AC. Mm, yes. <laughs> she didn't drive though, I did that. You deserve an award, my friend. Uh, she's a good navigator. <laughs> okay, so what's it doing? Steering all over the place. All over the place. It doesn't hold a straight line and corners are an adventure. How, how many miles on this car? Since I rebuilt it, 1,500. Since total maybe, do you know? Since it was new, since yeah. it was first built. Yeah. Uh, it was well over 100,000 when I told this but I'm right over. Yeah, and going on 50 years. But everything's been replaced, yeah. or most things. Right, well, we'll find out what wasn't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like everything's new here. What didn't you replace? That I don't remember. The steering box, probably. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But everything else has been redealed. Upper and lower control arms, uh, tie rods, everything. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and wiggle this here and see if I can feel any. Now nah, it feels pretty good there. Let's do the other side over here. Yeah, that one's real, real tight. Do it again so I can look at the uh, idler arm. Yeah, this, this one of all the, of the, this is the tightest one so far. This is tight in every area. Let's look at the steering box. Oh, headers. Yeah, fun. <laughs> We're going to take a break. We're going to come back to this one. Okay. Water break. <laughs> okay, I'm moving the rag joint ever so much. I'm going to grab onto the pitman arm, and I got a ton of slop in here. Look at that. I'm, I'm getting no movement on the pitman arm, and look how much I'm moving the rag joint. <laughs> yeah, so let's adjust this one and see what it does. Turn or a little more? Oh, I've got it. I'm trying to get it moving, moving at all. It seems to be painted right onto the. So much paint on it, I don't think I can move it. Okay, what we found on his car is every bit of the suspension was rock tight, not a little bit of bearing uh, play. Everything was brand new, just like it was supposed to but the steering box was way loose. I suggested adjusting it, but in the end, when you got a lot of slop in your box, all it's gonna do is make it a little better. And he had so much thread, uh, paint on his threads that he couldn't adjust it. So anyway, this is, you know, a lot of times you don't even need to get your car in the air. It, it, you can, look at this. Look at all that slop. So, so uh, if you were to put the camera underneath the car, you'd see that that was the area that was giving you all the slop. Look at that, he's, he's going down the road doing this and the car's doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, so you got, I don't know how much, that's, that's four inches or so of play. What do you see, Andrew? What's that idler arm doing? Going up and down? Yep. So there's your piggy right there, it's the idler arm. If I go 12 o'clock and six o'clock, I might feel some ball joint looseness there. What do you see, what do you see there, Marcus? You poke under there and see what you see on that upper ball joint. Yeah. So upper ball joints.
This is Mark Mullen, and he came all the way from Hong Kong. Ah, yes. Via, okay. via BC, but yeah, he spends most of the time in, in, in Hong Kong, so that was interesting. So what's your car doing? Uh, like a lot of the folks, uh, it's uh, wandering very slightly on the steering column, but uh, everything else seems to be tight, but uh, if I can get rid of that, I'd be happy. Okay. I think on this one, I want to show the control valve tested for slack uh, while it's still on the ground. So he's going to start it up, and we're going to poke the camera in there and show, show what it looks like. So uh, go ahead, right. and uh, he's going to point a light under it, and we'll tell you when to start it up. and just gently rock the steering wheel back and forth. Okay, why don't you give me some side-to-side -side movement here. I don't really feel any movement here. Um, go ahead and do it again. Tight there. Right there. This really looks tight everywhere, to be honest with you. Wow, this steering box has, I'm, I'm gonna say it's got minimal play. This one, I'll bet, if you turn that st steering box in a quarter turn, you're done on that one. I'm seeing fresh components here everywhere. Oh, the steering column, you got a tilt or fixed? fixed. I'm going to grab onto that rag joint and I'm going, I'm going to see if I can feel anything in the steering column. I kind of do feel a little bit in there. I wonder, uh, I wonder if we lowered it down and if I grabbed onto it as tight as I could. Sometimes if you can put vice grips on the end of the thing and hold it stationary, then rock your steering wheel back and forth. I wonder if maybe inside your column, in that two-piece column, we don't have some slack. Okay, let's go back down. Wow. So that's about 20. So this is the amount of play that I'm getting. 